today, um, David Stern passed away, age of 77. Um, the commissioner of the league from 84 to 2014. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he fell out with a brain hemorrhage, I think about two weeks ago, and he passed away today, New Year's Day, man. What, what was your uh, thoughts on, on David Stern, the commissioner? Um, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I had super, super strong thoughts about him. Um, yeah. You know, there was something there was some good, some bad. I think mostly good, though. He oversaw a really big period of growth for the league. Uh, I don't think the NBA is what it is today without him, uh, like without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the only questionable decision that I could ever think of from him was the the dress code thing. Yeah, it always that always was a little weird to me. Um, you know, like, why are you trying to affect what guys are wearing into a stadium but other than that i mean he he created the wmba um he created the g league g league at, at the time was the d league which yep. has now blossomed into a really important product for the nba mm-hmm. as far as development's concerned we're seeing a lot of players come up through that system and i think it's i honestly think that the d league is doing a ton for the big nba um as far as you know helping develop players and and turn them into uh you know, guys that can come in and contribute right away that weren't necessarily ready right out of college or right when they were drafted or whatever the case. Um, But on top of that, I mean, honestly, he always seemed like a pretty, a pretty nice guy. Um, I found him to be very funny. Yeah. Um, You know, most of the time when he would talk, when he would do speaking things and, you know, interviews and whatever, I I generally found his, his, uh, his like demeanor to be good and, and lighthearted by and large. Yeah. Um, seemed like a guy that enjoyed life, had a lot of fun. Uh, and also, I mean, in the in the internet and Twitter era, he gave us maybe one of the best and most memeable reaction gifts of all time with him uh, <laughs> yeah. choking on the water. Yeah, the water. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's funny. You know, it's really funny, like, that that's kind of some of the ways that we can remember people now in today's day and age. But, I mean, honestly, his, like, NBA policy decisions, I might not remember – Five, yeah. ten years down the line, but I can guarantee you five, ten years down the line, I'm still going to be tweeting out images of David Stern, you know, uh, choking on his water from and, you know, because he was so surprised by something or whatever. So, but all in all, you know, rest in peace. He seemed like yeah, a good dude. Right, rest um, in peace, man. Right, that right. was always my that was always my impression. He seemed like a nice enough guy. And um, by and large, I think he had a good tenure as the commissioner of the league. And I think he also picked a pretty good replacement. I, I like Adam Silver quite a bit, yeah. too. So. I think he probably has has something to do with that as well, and you know, so for that, he, you know, he also kind of deserves our thanks. So yeah, true, true story, man. Yeah, I mean, I think you know this one was was real big um, in terms of his past. I mean, his impact on the game was crazy. I mean, the modern NBA is what it is because of David Stern. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the way he was able to kind of grow the game uh, globally to a billion dollar phenom that it is right now. The whole Dream Team era. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the influx of international players that we have here. Like you said, the WNBA, the G League. He helped us. He helped the Knicks, right? They froze the envelopes. He got us Patrick Ewan. <laughs> he was a diehard Knicks fan. So Make they no say. Mistake. So yeah. they, allegedly. Listen, okay. man, David Stern froze those damn envelopes. Thank you, David Stern, for getting us the captain. But then he, he screwed us a 9-7, man, with Charlie Ward and P.J. Brown for, for suspending the players for leaving the bench. You know what I mean? We we lost we lost a lot of guys in that Knicks Heat series, man. Uh, for for leave for leaving the bench and, and getting suspended for some missed game six, some missed game seven. So that that was kind of rough. Um, Raptors and the Grizzlies. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. had two expansion teams in, in Canada. Um, and I, brought the brought the Bobcats back in yeah. to Charlotte, and which then turned into the Hornets. Facts, facts, yep. facts. Um, how about I mean the TV rights, right? When he came in, they they had TV rights deals at ten million dollars, and now worth almost a billion dollars in TV oh, yeah. rights. You yeah. know that that's just crazy, man. Well, and internationally, the game grew so much. I mean, that was a really big thing, actually. The embracing of I mean that that I don't know how much you can credit that to Stern or just to the game, but well, okay. So here's the way that the the flow chart would work. There, you mm-hmm. credit Stern for making the game, helping make the game bigger. Yeah. You know, in the '90s, which then inspires more european and you know asian children to like basketball growing up and play it which then leads to more international players coming from those countries which then leads to an even bigger you know love of the game in those markets and really big thriving leagues in those in those different markets now too that aren't the nba you know you have a whole huge 
uh, contingent of basketball in Europe that's like almost it, it probably only second to soccer at this point over there. Uh, and then you have basketball is, I don't know, like arguably the biggest sport in China at this point, Facts. I think. Um, and the NBA is enormous in China. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it, we saw how everything went down with the Mori situation. They were literally talking about the NBA salary cap might be affected if China Hell would yeah. pull themselves Hell out yeah. of NBA marketing yep. and stuff. So how about bringing Yao Ming over? That was a big move. Yao Ming. Too. Yep. Yeah. And again, you know, that all comes back to like, you know, Yao Ming got drafted, what, 2002, which means uh, how old is he? Like 19, 20 at that point. Um, I th- no, I think he was older because he, he was playing in China. He, I think he was a little bit older. He, so he, say even if he was like 22, you know, however old he was, um, he comes over in the draft in 2002. And, you know, he probably grew up watching the product that David Stern helped build up during the 90s. Yeah. And that's probably what inspired him to play basketball on top of the fact that he was like seven foot six. And it true. was just kind true. of a logical move. But <laughs> hey, hey let, I mean, they took out the physicality of the game, took, a, he took out hand checking. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, you which know, some people hate and some people love, but yeah. ultimately, you know, it is what it is. Like I, I think it led to a little, uh, a little more fast-paced style of ball, uh, at least in some cases. So that's true. That, that's that's true. It, you know, it, it definitely opened things up. As you said, the dress code definitely controversial uh, for uh, on many different levels, from a business standpoint, from a cultural standpoint. And, you know, there, yeah. there was definitely the, a lot of controversy I, when he did that. I always thought the cultural the cultural aspect of that always kind of bothered me. Yeah. It was a little because, you know, the guy he was targeting was Alan Iverson, who dressed yep. very, uh, very like rapper street style mm-hmm. back in, you know, 2002. And, and, you know, it seemed like a direct attack on that sort of subculture, which obviously has racial connotations and everything it else. Did. So, it did. It, you know, that's that was always like the one black mark to me. If I think of like Stern in his time, I'm like, yeah. shit, like that's that's the one thing that always kind of bothered me. That, but, that was big, man. They eventually got over that too. You know, True. I think Stern realized because that was gone before Stern was gone as yeah. the commissioner. Yeah. So he, I mean, he, he realized his error of his ways. Up on it. Yeah, he lightened it up, and and you know now it's even lighter. I mean now, but now guys just dress. You know, it's just a different fashion <laughs> year yeah. now. You know what I mean? Now it's yeah. like it ain't well, be. It's fashionable for LeBron to wear a, a suit with shorts now. You yeah. know, like that's just a move to do one day. So I, I, I I it's just a different, different year. I can't even touch that, man. What about the yeah. Chris? Yo, he vetoed the Chris Paul trade. Yo, David oh, Stern was right. like the godfather of the league. He vetoed the Chris Paul trade to the Lakers. And a lot of people hated that. Yeah, that, that, was, was, that was very controversial. Okay. Yeah. Lakers fans in particular will still tell you that that was, I mean, they won championships after they, mm-hmm. <laughs> after they made the, uh, that was when they made then instead the or no I'm sorry they didn't they didn't win a championship after that because they made the D12 trade instead of that the white trade right yeah. yeah yeah so I guess that didn't quite work out for them but no. I mean it's I don't know they they, they still complain about that yeah. to this day but <laughs> yeah they I was do. I was mixing it up with the Pau Gasol trade for they, a second they that do, happened man. well before that well they before do. the Chris Paul saga so and then the two things with MJ would they ban the black and red Jordan ones. Mm-hmm. Definitely, they find MJ and ban the black and red Jordan ones because they didn't have enough white in the shoes. That was back in uh, '85, I think. Imagine how how preposterous that is by today's standards. You yeah. literally have guys getting getting custom uh, airbrushed it, shoes, wear whatever with, you like, want, whatever designs on them. Yep. I mean, I don't know. It's it, it, and you know, it's even funnier to think about that. Like when you think about. We th- we think oh that's so antiquated that that happened in 1985 or whatever the NFL didn't get rid of those rules until like two years ago, so yeah. it just kind of puts in perspective that the NBA is usually quite a bit ahead of ahead. other definitely. leagues as definitely. far as stuff goes. Yeah, de- definitely ahead of it. And then you know the whole MJ conspiracy theory when he left. Mm-hmm. Was it the gambling issue? Was he really trying to play baseball? Did David Stern yeah. know about the gambling addiction? You know, they I said, heard a theory that his dad got murdered by the mob yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they uh, said yeah, they said MJ owed. They said MJ yeah. owed those dudes in suits, man. And that's why he mm-hmm. backed away from the game. And they claim mm-hmm. that David Stern knew about it. David Stern in the interview with Woj, read, read that article at Woj. He said uh, when, when, when they were dealing with the lockout of 2011, he went into the locker room at the All-Star game and told the players that they better come to the table. He said he knows where all the bodies in the NBA were buried because he put them there. <laughs> take take it for what you will, Al. But to me, that hey. means frozen envelopes and a lot of you know under the table dealings, man. But hey, you take it for what it will, what you will, man. David Stern was the Godfather, I guess, man. Don Don David, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> David Soprano, <laughs> absolutely, man. So yeah, you know, listen, just just to put a bow on it, I think you you gotta touch on it because of the the impact that he had, uh, whether it was you know. Um, 
you know, from the game itself or whatever the controversy was. You know, he was definitely a controversial figure, but no doubt had a big impact on the game. I mean, we might not even be here talking about the game if, if it wasn't for some of, uh, you know, things that he did. Yeah, definitely true. I, I mean, good and bad. You know, we just highlighted how many good things, how many bad things. But yeah. by and large, the, the positives well outweighed the negatives. I think that's that's pretty undisputed as yeah. far as Stern's concerned. Absolutely. All right.